How's it going, everybody? Brian Alvarez here on Wrestling Observer Live. We are here every day, Monday through Friday. That's right, it's Fun Friday today, everybody. I interrupted my own open and forgot what the rest of it was. But we are here every day, Monday through Friday, New Pacific 3 Eastern, Sunday, 3 Pacific 6 Eastern, Saturday mornings with Jim Valley, 10 a.m. Pacific 1 Eastern, Sundays with Andrew Zarian. And it is Friday, and yes, we have a lot to talk about here today. SmackDown is tonight, and guess what? This is it. Final SmackDown on Fox. And the whole bloodline is scheduled to be on the show. And also going head-to-head with SmackDown and the NFL is AEW Collision. God bless them. They've got a pay-per-view tomorrow at the... uh, I presume now arena, it's all out. We have the full lineup for Collision and All Out. And uh, thankfully, we already got a full lineup for the Collision show here today, which is uh, nice. We did not have much of a lineup for Wednesday, and the show did not do very well. But it is a broken record, so I will not continue on. We got Raw Monday. We got a lot of legal news involving the Vince McMahon lawsuit. And also a lawsuit involving Cody, WWE, and Fanatics. We'll tell you about the potential return of Saturday night's main event. Tony Khan had a media call yesterday. Dynamite and NXT ratings. I tell you, I hated NXT. Okay, just checking. And uh, some new trademark filings by AEW as well. Plus, a legend shows up at Raw Monday. So lots to talk about today. Text messages for now. 425-780-7566. That is 425-780-7566. Email me at 4wonline at gmail.com. Also at 4 Online threads, Instagram, and Cameo at 4 Online, And uh, at Brian Alvarez on Twitter slash X. Subscribe to my Twitter. I got some fun stuff coming up, especially next weekend. Back in a moment with more Observer Live. Back in the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Sempervivi, also of WrestlingObserver.com. It's Fun Friday. I'm here today. Yeah, look at you. You showed up. Well, I'm not sure what day I'm going to take off from now on. It might change now that the kids are in school. Nah. That always makes life easy and difficult at the same time. Know what I mean? Yeah, sp- especially for me when you don't tell me what day that's going to be until a couple the last minutes second? before the show. Yeah, well, you know. yesterday was a disaster. I did tell <laughs> you 10 minutes before the show started. <laughs> Which, you know what? Honestly, with how your week has been, I mean, were you surprised? I'm not surprised by anything, dude. I had more fun yesterday than I did watching NXT, though. I'll tell you that much. Have did I tell you how much I hated show- that show? I Have you done enough shows yet where you've gotten all of that out? You know what's funny is is I thought I got it all out on uh, on Wednesday on this show. And I was, I wasn't, I like, I felt like I was over it when I started the Brian and Vinny show last night. Boy, oh, was no. I not. No. Man, no. once I got going, I couldn't stop. And there was no, uh, I, 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 uh, I could be as profane as I wanted. I could say any bad word I wanted. So if you want to listen to that, you got to subscribe. It's video.f4wonline.com or wrestlingobserver.com for the podcast. Or if you only want the podcast, you can do f4wonline.com slash Apple, Apple Podcasts, f4wonline.com slash Spotify if you want to get the podcast on Spotify. But I will say this. If you, I will say this. I realize this seems like I got a big head, but I'll say this. If you pay nine ninety nine to sign up this month on either Apple Podcasts or Spotify, you will get your money's worth from last night's show alone. <laughs> I had fifty dollars worth of anger, maybe a hundred. Anyway, celebrity doctor Carlin Colker. Am I out of my mind, or did it used to be Carlton Colker? Anyway, he has withdrawn his petition slash complaint against Janelle Grant in an adjacent development to the Grant McMahon lawsuit. Following her petition in July seeking medical records related to Grant's treatment at the clinic as it pertained to her ongoing <clears throat> sex trafficking lawsuit against WWE. Worse, it always happens at the worst time. WWE... McMahon and John Laurinaitis Colker and his peak wellness facility filed a complaint against Grant in August, alleging her efforts were part of, quote, a smear campaign. Grant's team filed a motion to strike the complaint, filed a special motion for sanctions against both Colker and peak wellness. 
including attorney costs awarded to Grant. Complaint was withdrawn by Colker's legal team on Wednesday, while Grant's petition against Colker and Peak Wellness remains in place. In a statement to Post Wrestling, these attorneys are the best. Grant attorney Ann Callis stated that, quote, Unsurprisingly, Dr. Kolker has withdrawn his baseless motion. In the same vein as Mr. McMahon's recently struck down motion, this was filed simply as yet another frivolous attempt to intimidate Ms. Grant. You know, when I was a kid, it was like, I always thought that lawyers would just, you know, here's just the facts, ma'am. Man, no, these these lawyers, the stuff they write, it's like it's so over the top. Everybody's attorney. I'm not just saying like Janelle Grant's, like the WWE lawyers. God, the stuff that, uh, what was Vince's lawyer? What's his name? Oh, uh, Pittsburgh. Um, yeah, anyway, well, he he wrote some dandies, let me tell you. Well, stuff that guy wrote. But anyway, that's the latest in that. Legalese. Legalese. Legalese is a lot different than I thought it was when I was a kid. Uh, Jerry McDevitt. Jerry McDevitt, thank you. How could we forget about that? I don't know, because, uh, yeah, Jerry McDivitt. Was he interviewed for the Netflix documentary? That's what I want to know. I kind of gotten a, an idea of who's on there, and I didn't hear his name, which That's is kind of point. weird. You'd well, think he would have to be on there. Dude, well, that guy was Vince's lawyer for decades and decades. Well, I, I would assume that they asked him. I mean, I don't he know how said they no. would not have asked him, and that's what I'm thinking is he said no, but it also makes it even more amazing that he did one interview. One. Now, he's done some newspaper things like that over the years, but he really has only done one since he stopped being Vince's attorney, and that's been it. And you talk about guys in history that could write books, you know, we always bring up the name of Jim Barnett as somebody who we lost without him writing a book. Kevin Sullivan's another recent example of that. This is another guy, Jerry McDevitt. I can only imagine if he were to let loose in one of his books exactly everything that went on behind the scenes and in some of the dealings it would be amazing also got a musician suing cody rhodes wwe and fanatics over the american nightmare trademark claiming rhodes isn't following the terms first agreed to in march 29 2019 settlement for supported by post wrestling the lead singer and co-founder of the band american nightmare has held a trademark for the term since 2016 for use in, quote, music, clothing, and entertainment services. Wesley Isold's lawsuit filed in California alleges trademark infringement, breach of contract, intentional interference with contractual relations. The band, founded in 1998, has toured as recently as 2023. He is suing for damages of at least 150000 in addition to treble damages of up to 300000 Related to federal trademark infringement, he is looking to recover legal fees. Rose is used term. He's going to need pain and suffering after dealing with all the wrestling fans that are coming at him online. Rhodes has used the term as his nickname for years. Take on his father, Dusty Rhodes' American dream. Not the first time Isold and Rhodes have done legal battle. They settled in the aforementioned March 2019 dispute for 30000 when Rhodes applied for the trademark for wrestling-related activities. The terms were that Rhodes could use the term on merchandise under the condition that such items prominently used his name, likeness, or wrestling-related imagery in a size at least 75% larger than the American Nightmare text. One item I sold claims is confusing both fans of his band and WWE is Rhodes' crown t-shirt, which doesn't feature imagery of Rhodes or wrestling, but uses the term instead. Legal team reached out to Rhodes' legal team in 2022 about the shirt. Claims they were never they never were responded to. I'm not a judge. You're not. Well, here's the thing to me, okay? Here's the thing with these these deals. Yes. If they have an agreement and Cody didn't abide by it, then he needs to stop. That's it. Okay? But whenever it comes up like you're confusing people. Like people are gonna see his American Nightmare shirt and what does that even mean? They'll be confused. Like, they'll go, hey, you like that band? Nah, it's a wrestling shirt. Oh, I'm well, deeply I think confused. It, I, I would think it would be, say, you go into a, I don't know, Hot Topic, right? Where they would sell wrestling and band shirts. And you see American Nightmare up there on the sleeves. And you see maybe a logo or some artwork or whatever. That, I guess, is what they would claim in... 
hey, you're supposed to have stuff up there that says Cody Rhodes. You're supposed to know it's going to be Cody's as opposed to our stuff. And I think that is one of the things he's pointing to. As so he's saying that, like, if if I have a fusion in the market, if I have a fan of the band. And they see a Cody Rhodes shirt, and they think it's a band shirt, and they buy it. He gets the money, and I don't? Well, yeah, and I believe it has been stated in there that people come to the shows wearing Cody Rhodes shirts, believing that it's and that's their bad? merchandise, and vice versa. Well, yeah, because if somebody, you're supposed to have a deal with somebody, and somebody Well, that is, part, obviously, I just said that. Like, if they made a deal, yeah, and Cody uh, so, didn't abide yeah, that's, by it. That's bad. But that's the, bad. The, conf- I, uh, the confusion in the marketplace is always, I, I don't understand well, what that even means. I need a lawyer to explain this confusion in the marketplace things. Like, I don't want, well, I don't want fans to be or a lawyer. confused. So. You are a reverend, though. I don't know. I don't know if I got to renew that. Oh, really? <laughs> I don't know how that works. That was decades ago. I thought that was forever. I thought that was life. It might I be. Like, I mean, I don't know. Doctor of Divinity is forever. I got my Doctor of Divinity like little thing, that card. I got it somewhere. You can marry people and whatnot. I, I am actually a doctor, if you wanted to call me that, but Professor Dr. Brian Alvarez. I'm a doctor and a professor. What do you want out of me? Okay. Professor. Yeah. Third degree black belt professor don't yell at me i didn't make it up back in a moment observer live hey, boss, show, can i can i ask you a question i, I didn't get a chance to do this well, what, what are you what are you even starting what, what do you mean what am i starting let's what hear it you? let's hear it okay so i heard you and dave talk on wrestling observer oh, radio no. and you were both making points about should somebody that's challenging for a title wrestle on the day before they're supposed to take on the champion? And Dave is right. This has happened a zillion times. I'm sure we've seen this how many times? That's on why Raw? I argued, but go Hold ahead. Hold on. On Raw and on SmackDown because, you know, there's always something that gets thrown in a challenger's way by some dastardly heels as part of a group. You know, we've seen that happen before. I know we have, Okay. But I actually, I agree with you somewhat. And here's the reason why that neither one of you mentioned. It's not that she's wrestling Deanna Perrazzo. It's that Deanna Perrazzo got this big video package with mood lighting and drama drama and all that stuff about her being the virtuoso. If she were to wrestle Harley Cameron or she were to wrestle somebody else, it wouldn't be a big deal at all. But the fact that they're building up Deanna for God knows what reason and Dave saying, well, that's good. She's beating somebody. Deanna's not anybody right now. And I'm sorry for her for that. But that's unfortunately has been the case. Good match with Thunder Rosa, all that sort of stuff. But she's not exactly being puffed up to a level where she's to me i don't know that was the biggest problem with that whole argument was it's not that she's having a match it's that she's having a match against somebody that now is supposedly built up you know as a big deal and you know if she gets beaten should diana perrazzo move on to take the title match that's where if she was beating a bum it wouldn't be an issue yeah sometimes dave and i get in a big back and forth yes and you go on the board and people go they're both largely making the same point, but they're not actually listening to each other. You know, oh, people I don't say go that all the time. Board. I don't go on the board. Okay. No. Well, none of you actually listened to what I had to say. Okay. Not me. Me. No. I didn't? No, you didn't listen. I didn't. Okay. The reason I argued with Dave is because I said a very specific thing, which is, why is she having a match with a big star the day before? She's getting, I did not say on the last show. Everybody keeps going back to the last show. Well, oftentimes on Raw, Raw is between six and seven days before the next pay-per-view. I specifically said the day before, not the week before, not the Raw before Saturday or Sunday. I said the day before. If this was a, I don't even care, okay? The reason I argued it is because Dave said it happened all the time. It does not. It does not happen all the time. It will happen somewhat regularly on a Raw before a pay-per-view. It does not happen all the time the night before a pay-per-view. Now, the other big issue with his argument 
is he goes, oh, back in the 70s, you know, way back in the day, Cal it Palace, happened the Francisco. same day or whatever. No. When that happened, when somebody challenging for a title was going to wrestle the day before as a warm-up match, it was exactly that, a squash match. Some rando jobber. Ricky Morton's getting a shot against Ric Flair on on, uh, Sunday. Saturday night, whatever, he wrestles some job guy, beats him in 10 seconds, whatever. That's your warm-up match. It's not. Ricky Morton is challenging for the NWA title on Sunday. And on Saturday night, he's going to go one-on-one with Raging Bull Manny Fernandez. They're going to go 15 minutes. That would never happen. Now, sure, if you want to go back and find... At a time when it happened, that's okay. He said it happens all the time. This was the same reason I argued with him about the overrun. Remember we were talking about the overrun? And yeah. he said the AW overrun always goes up? It didn't. And somebody went back and looked, and in fact it doesn't. So that's why I argued for so long. This idea that it always happens. I, ve- I was very specific in my argument. Having a championship match on Saturday and on Friday night having a match with a star, it doesn't make any sense. If this were real, that doesn't make any sense whatsoever. It doesn't even bother me. I don't care who she wrestles tonight. I cared about being told this happens all the time, which it doesn't. So that's why I was ranting about it. Then, of course, everyone's like, oh, well, Raw, Seth wrestled on Raw before. I didn't say Raw. Raw's not the night before a pay-per-view, unless there's a pay-per-view on Tuesday, which there isn't. So, that's it. You happy you set me off? You happy you lit the fuse? Uh, You know what? If I was wrong in anything that I said, Brian, I deeply apologize. And I am am definitely fulfilled uh, after hearing you clear things up. Thank you. Lenny's like, by Brian's logic, the night one main event of Mania shouldn't have happened. That's a totally different situation, you geek. That was a very specific stipulation that everybody agreed to. We're going to have a tag match, and the winner chooses the stip on the second day of WrestleMania. Like, and not only that, okay, that's an example. Does that happen at every pay-per-view? Does that happen all the time? No, my point is it doesn't happen all the time. You know what I don't like in discussion of wrestling is hyperbole. No, 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 no. Now, can I talk about this other story here? <laughs> the return of a classic WWE series could be imminent. WrestleVotes reported within the next few days, WWE is set to announce an upcoming primetime NBC special could be on Saturday. Dave Meltzer followed up in the Observer Newsletter, noting the return of Saturday night's main event will be announced very soon. Four in-ring specials per year, airing on NBC, are part of WWE's new TV deal, for SmackDown to return to the USA Network. So look at that. Saturday night's main event is back. You know, every time they've tried to bring that back, it has done awful ratings, but we're at, at such a point now with network TV that depending on what these shows are up against, they may be very well some of the top-ranked shows on TV, if not for that day, maybe even for that week. You know, the original run of Saturday night's main event was freaking awesome. I went back and rewatched all of them. Oh, yeah. And what I should have done was watch this primetime wrestling for about six months and then watch all the Saturday Night's Main Events. They'd have been even better. But back then, you know, a Saturday Night's Main Event was special. You only had a few pay-per-views per year. You watched the TV shows, just a bunch of nothing happened in matches. You know, your big main event would be Cowboy Bob Orton versus, I don't know, whoever. Piper. No, nah, not even that. Oh, well. Rick Martell. Cowboy oh, Bob Orton versus Rick Martell would be your oh. featured match. It goes 16 minutes, have a lame finish. And then you'd have a Saturday night's main event with like big stars wrestling each other. And it was awesome. And then they brought it back in uh, the mid 2000s. And, uh, and y- you know what Saturday night's main event was? Extra content. It was Battle of the Belts. Yeah. It's a special show. But nothing ever happens. And we have seen how Battle of the Belts does. And uh, there is one big difference between Battle of the Belts and Saturday Night's Main Event. 
What's that? One is on network television. Mm -hmm. So there is a chance that you could catch some new viewers by airing that thing on NBC. We'll see. And, you know, it depends, yeah. on, when it, it depends on when it when it airs as well. Like, Saturday Night's main event was so hot in the 80s, it would preempt Saturday Night Live. Well, no, it would be on, they would take that break. It would be every six weeks or so. Yeah, in the Saturday Night Live time slot. In the, yeah, instead of a rerun, they would actually go ahead and do that. And it worked out wonderfully. I mean, obviously, Dick Ebersol was a big part of that. Thank you for airing that on the sc <laughs> sc sc uh, split screen there, brother. Yeah. You know, you could just switch to Mike. Anyway. I'm done filling time. Go ahead. Yeah, Saturday night's main event. But it's not going to be preempting like a major show. I don't think on Saturday night it'll be in some random uh, time slot. Now they cut to me. <laughs> you know what? Producer John's pissed at you for having to make him put up with just me yesterday. Why? What an easy job. He doesn't have to do anything. He's got to hear me talk for a full 60 minutes. He could take the headphones off and just leave the screen on you. <laughs> Who's he got to switch to? I don't know. He stands by. He's a good producer. Maybe I want some graphics up there. He can throw them up a lot quicker than He shows Garrett too much did. of me. That's the problem. Like, when you're talking, he just shows me looking at you. I don't like that. Suncast, get rid of that. Every now and then it's fine, but... Why can't you look me Sometimes when eye? you're talking, I've got to, like, brush my teeth or something. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, brush your teeth. You just can't look me in the eye is what it is. Or sneeze. Sneeze. I can't look you in the eye because I can't even see your beady little eyes under that hat with the shadow. I'm not even sure you've got eyes. Why are we wasting time with this when there's so much more to talk about? It's fun Friday! I'm having fun. So, uh, Collision is tonight. Young Bucks, Okada, and Jack Perry versus Danielson, Claudio, Wheeler, and Pac. That match should be absolutely awesome. Yes. Three Continental title match. I forget the name they had. Qualifiers for the It's play. like a four-word word or something. We got Orange Cassie versus Brian Keith, Lance Archer, Mark Briscoe, and Takesha versus the Beast Mortos. The four winners get a shot at Okada on Saturday. Deanna Parazzo versus Ikaru Shida. I just, why couldn't it just be Takeshita, Briscoe, and Mortis in that match? That would just, I've been fine with that. Because we're finding out who qualifies, dude. I know, I don't want that. I just want those three guys in that match with Okada. Period. I'm going to make a, I'm going to make a wild prediction here. Go ahead. I predict Orange Cassidy wins. Mark Briscoe wins. And the Beast Mortos wins. Ooh. When Okada screws Takeshita out of the match. People want to see Takeshita and Okada. Why are you putting them together for the first time in a four-way? Get Takeshita out of there. Build up heat for their singles match. Back in a moment, Observer Live. Back on the show, Brian Elber is here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Simpervivi, WrestlingObserver.com. So that's uh, Collision tonight. And they're going head-to-head -head with the NFL and SmackDown with Cody Rhodes responding to Solo's challenge. Eight-man tag. Dawkins, Montez Ford, Gargano, and Ciampa versus Solo, Tama, Tonga, and Jacob Fatu. Bailey versus Tiffany Stratton. And the return of Giovanni Vinci. I like it. That's my selling point right there. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah. Okay. Absolutely. You remember the, uh, the makeover there in NXT? It was very promising. I liked that a lot. And then they called him up to the main roster. He remained a mute and then got beat up by his Imperium friends. So, hey, why not? Look, they got a division with Andrade, Carmelo, a lot of people over there where he would probably fit in perfectly. And some new blood there wouldn't hurt my feelings. It also wouldn't hurt my feelings to see him link up with somebody because... I could love to see some new tag teams there, both women and men, but especially when it comes to the men's division. And then all out is tomorrow. Brian Danielson, Jack Perry for the world title. Swerve and Hangman Page, unsanctioned lights out steel cage match. That is the main event going on last. Willow and Chris Statlander in a Chicago street fight. No CMLL title on the line. Will Ospreay versus Pac for the international title. Young Bucks against... Claudio and Wheeler for the tag team titles. MJF versus Daniel Garcia. Mercedes against Sheeta with Camille banned from ringside. And Okada defends in a four-way against those four guys. Those and Luchagato actually had a great idea, which is you uh, team up 
The Beast, Mortos, and Luchasaurus. They win the tag team titles. What a team that would be. Oh, my God. Luchasaurus and the Beast, Mortos. And we got Rob Not exactly Monday. the uh, Jurassic Express. Maybe need a little bit of a different uh, term. The uh, Jurassic uh, Slow Train. And then on Raw, we've got Bret Hart will appear in Calgary. Jey Uso, Pete Dunne, Braun Strowman, Ely Dragunov, number one contenders match for the Intercontinental title. The winner loses to Braun violently. Bianca and Jade versus Alba Fire and Isla Dawn. wonder if we're getting the tag uh, title change and split up here, or if they'll hold it off for another eight months. God, we'll hold it off for at least a little while. Wyatt Six versus American Maid in what they called an eight-man tag, but it's actually three men and a woman versus eight three person? men and a woman. Yeah, you know. And then you ready you're gonna, for you ready for the lineup? About that like the Iron Man match for, uh, between two women. You ready for the lineup for NXT on Tuesday? Yes, yes I am. Defends the TNA Knockouts World Title and Open Challenge. Who? What? Tag Team Champions against NXT Heritage Cup Champion defends against number one contender Last Man Standing match versus, <laughs> and also on the card is versus. Ah, uh, somebody posted a format, eh? No, that's 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 it. I'm not identifying anybody. Oh, okay. We don't need to do that. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Still going to be better about that. You know, they did actually make sure that you uh, the, you knew who Sean Spears was. There was <laughs> Yeah, they, somebody found one. They screen capped one time where they actually identified two people. <laughs> that NXT, 631,000 viewers in a .17... Dynamite, 660 and .19. That wasn't good. Those two shows were close. And uh, Dynamite was going head-to-head with the U.S. Open Tennis. And... <laughs> that didn't matter. I don't think much else for uh, for Tennis NXT. was not bigger this year than it was last year. It's not more... St- Coco Golf is not bigger this year than she was last year. They just had a bad night. I mean, 40% down year over year when it came to that 18 to 49. And talk about it every week. It's consistent. It was pretty much this week, too. Down 20% year over the year when it came to the overall rating. And usually it's 25%. Well, they lost an extra 15% of that number on top of it in the 18 to 49. So just a bad night. I mean, there was one, you know, 915 to 930. It was under 600,000. They just... They were consistent throughout the whole thing, and NXT in pretty much was the same way. It was a flat line, but not a whole lot of people turned out. Well, I mean, the I don't want to say it's scary. I don't like to be that guy. But if we compare year over year, what did the show do this year as compared to last year? NXT up 7% in viewers, down 56 in 18 to 49. Wait, where am I here? That's that's from last week. That's oh, last week. Okay, yeah. sorry. So uh, compared to the same week, NXT viewership down six percent, eighteen to forty nine down five point six percent. The Dynamite show, year over year, viewership down twenty six percent. The Dynamite eighteen to forty nine, year over year, is down. 39 percent that particular show was yeah and that's again and it's also the 21st straight week they have had a year-over-year decline in both of those categories yeah and when you we go back and you look at those it's almost always one out of five overall one out of four and you know this week it was even worse and yeah okay the u.s open maybe did a little bit of that uh, football, whatever. I mean, I don't, I don't know. There wasn't football, so I, I don't know what you can really try to blame it on, other than there's just no, there was no interest. You know, it did not pique everybody's interest, and they had about seven hundred thousand. It was six hundred ninety-one thousand last week. Coming off of that show, you're going into a pay-per-view. It doesn't bode well to me. You know. Then again, we've seen numbers not matter when it comes to sometimes with pay-per-view buys, but. With everything else going on, school starting, I mean, if you want to throw all of it on top of it, on the fact that they're just not hot, these pay-per-view buys for this show may not be very good. Well, all I can tell you is that show quality-wise, 
I mean, there's no comparison between this and 2019 WWE, which was just the absolute bottom of the barrel. But, but, <laughs> COVID hold on. COVID was the best thing for that company in some ways. These, these year-over-year percentage declines are the same as WWE in 2019, when WWE yeah, but, was cratering. But look what WWE was starting with. WWE was starting with close to 2 million at that time. And remember, I told you, it could get lower, it could get lower, and it ultimately it did, and it bottomed out. But AEW, unfortunately... You know, they weren't working from as high of a number, and we've seen it drop steadily every single year. When you go back and look at the chart that Brandon Thurston has, you know, graphing where they were at month to month with shows that were not moved out of their time slot. And you see that two years ago, they were peaking around this time, you know, leading into all that. And then now they're about at their lowest point that they've ever been. It's brutal. Well, I'm not going to blame this because this is not the reason, but it certainly didn't help that they had like three things announced for Dynamite on Wednesday. It's it's the same thing over and over. And I will say that, you know, they're they're I have criticisms of I actually thought Dynamite was for the most part like a pretty great show on Wednesday. I do have certain uh criticisms and when I, whenever I bring up these criticisms, I get the same thing. Like the real hardcores get really mad about it. I like the show. They say yeah, I think the show doing is it great. now with it's like, well, AEW is going to die. Like nobody's saying that they're going. I'm not get saying it's going to die. They're getting all those sorts of things. They are but losing. There's, there's a, a. Uh, two things. Can I don't want to say it's an accelerating decline of interest, but I mean, you know, we're talking like big year over year declines. And one of the things, it, this is exactly like somebody was arguing with me about it on the board today, the Kyle Fletcher thing. Like, we're still on Kyle Fletcher because I couldn't believe they beat Kyle Fletcher on Wednesday. Like, they set it up like it was going to be a draw, and they beat the guy again. And, you know, they're like, ah, oh, Kyle Fletcher, he has great matches. The people like him. You know, I like watching him have great matches. It's it's fine. Okay, that's 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 great for you, okay? But one of the issues here is that nobody ever gets elevated in this company. You're just watching the same people in the same spot over and over and over again for years. And, like, I, I mean, they started to push the guy. He got a win. He got a great promo segment. And what happened? He went on and he lost to MJF, and he's right back where he was again. He lost again on, on Wednesday. Losing, 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 losing. You know, they brought up Daniel Garcia. Daniel Garcia is hot, okay? Does anybody think Daniel Garcia is beating MJF on Saturday? I mean, I suppose it's possible. I think you have to. But no, here's a problem. I don't think he's re-signed. Like, I think Wait, they expect whoa, him really? to re-sign, but I don't think that he's re-signed yet. So you're really going to put a guy who hasn't re-signed yet over MJF? No, no, not in that case. Obviously not, no. So I don't know. But then if that's in that case, why would he even put himself in that position in that match? We have had people say, I'm not doing that creative a million times reportedly, right? If he's going to do that, why would you go out there then? To, I, that doesn't even make any sense to me. That that makes no sense to me at all. That's That's crazy on both sides both for them for putting him in that position in that match and not doing it on TV where MJF can dust him off. But then again, if I'm him, why would you put yourself in that position where not only did you get laid out and look flatter than a plate of pee against MJF in that lead up, then you're going to go lose this match. I don't care if it's a banger and you look better in it. Like that guy needs a win and MJF can afford a loss. Even if people don't want to see Daniel Garcia pushed, like if that's what you want to do, that's what you got to do. That is crazy to me. That's crazy. This guy goes, they're, they're trying to get people to care about Fletcher. So people care more about Ozzy open when they come back. You think Ozzy Open as a tag team in AEW has a bigger upside than Kyle Fletcher as a single? Is that what you're telling me? Yeah. Not to mention, Ozzy Open has been a team on AEW for years. We're just going right back to Ozzy Open as a team? Uh, yeah, I don't think you want that. I don't think you want that at all because I think, you know, Osprey, look, him, if Fletcher losing is fine, if the plan is that finally Mark Davis comes back and a newly reformed, re-energized Callis family stomps him out so he can be Osprey's full-time good buddy friend. And if you want to make Fletcher 
the guy that people have to go through to get to Osprey, I think you can do that. So I'm actually okay right now with him losing, but it's got to end that way so he can become a baby face and start getting wins over some of these other guys and build him up to a certain level, at least as high as he can go. Oh, my God. For those of you that expect Daniel Garcia to win tomorrow, I'll have you know that Lenny is expecting him to win. Oh, boy. So I'm oh. deeply sorry. God. Don't put the house on it. No, please don't. We'll get the Lenny counter up on Monday. Just shrug like Pete Dunn. That's all you can do. AWS, two new trademark filings. <laughs> One of which I just can't wait. Yes. El Clon. El Clon. The Clone. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> you know, when I ran the YWF, I had what I thought was the greatest idea for an angle ever. And it was The Clone. And it was a guy who would claim that he was a clone. And, you know, there would be probably a masked person that was regularly interfering, and he would always claim that it was his clone. And, and uh, like, the whole, the whole gimmick was that I had to find triplets because I had to actually find a guy who had a twin. And then once we did the twin thing for a while because he had a clone, then a third clone. I, I mean, I had this whole thing, but I couldn't find triplets. Back in a moment, Observer Live. Somebody had a question on the, ch on the uh, whatever chat no nah, the text ah why is it an unsanctioned lights out steel cage match because isn't a steel cage match already like whatever i don't know but this is my presumption oh okay go ahead they're calling it an unsanctioned lights out steel cage match so it can go on last because yeah. the world title match always goes on last so instead of just letting the cage match go on last because it's the match people most want to see, you give it a special name, which necessitates well, it going on last. That's that literally special, the only reason I think they're doing this. That special name comes, though, from a history of pro wrestling doing this. And I don't want to talk to you about 1970s Cow Palace stuff here. But, yes, it goes on last. They turn the lights off and turn them back on again to show that it is unsanctioned. We don't want to have anything to do with this. These men want to kill each other. We're going to provide them the opportunity to. We, as a promotion, are not responsible for what happens. So all of that stuff should have been built up a lot more. The drama of it should have been built up a lot more. Yes, a house got burned down, but as far as the building of the match goes, that's supposed to be the danger and the drama inherent in this steel cage blow-off that's uncensored. Remember I mentioned I hated NXT? I forgot to mention this. <laughs> so Trick Williams faces Pete Dunne, and they both get rapidly counted out. Yes. And, and you know, the audience is all angry. So then, this is this is this is in the first hour, okay? So an hour later, they interview Ava, and she goes, she said something effective. I've been thinking about this for the last hour. So when you think about that, you're like, this took an hour. What she came up with after thinking for an hour? What can we do? Because we got a count out this time. Not no count out. Last man standing. <laughs> Took you an hour to come up with that? Like, what? Gah! I'm out of here! Wrestling Observer Live!